they are divided into the cranium, the fold of the skull, the cranium bones, and the facial bones. First, the cranial bones. We have the frontal bone, the frontal bone. We have the two parietal bones. We have the temporal bones, temporal bone. And on the posterior aspect, we have the occipital bone. This is the occipital bone. And uh, we have the sphenoid bone. There's only one bone from side to side, sphenoid bone. We have the, on the posterior side of the occipital bone, we have the uh, external occipital protuberance. For the attachment of the uh, nuchal ligament, we have the, uh, we have the superior nuchal line, superior nuchal line, and the inferior nuchal line. Inferior nuchal line. The frontal, the frontal bone articulates with the parietal bones at the coronal suture. This is the coronal suture. The two parietal bones articulate with one another at the, at the sagittal suture. The point, of, the point of intersection between these two uh, sutures is called brigma. Brigma. The two parietal bones articulate with the occipital bone at the landoid suture. This is landoid suture. The point of the intersection between the uh, sagittal suture and the landoid suture is called landoid. This is lambda. Lambda. Lambda, sorry. Lambda. We have the parts of the temporal bone, which is the zygomatic process. Zygomatic process. We have mastoid process. Styloid process. The styloid process. Uh, some references say that this is the, the tympanic process. This small bone is the tympanic process of the, tem of the temporal bone. This is the squamous part of the temporal bone. We have the petrous part of the temporal bone. Not to forget, this was the sphenoid bone. It ha it's composed of the body of the sphenoid. This is the body of the sphenoid. And it has the lesser wing and the greater wing. Body, lesser wing, greater wing. We have the parts of the occipital bone. This is the squamous part of the occipital bone. Squamous part of the occipital bone. We have the condylar part of the occipital bone. Condylar, uh, condylar part of the occipital bone. And we have the basilar part of the occipital bone. This is also referred to as the base of the skull. And uh, we had the ethmoid bone. This was sphenoid. This is ethmoid. It cannot be seen from the outer surface of the skull. It's inside the skull. Ethmoid. It forms the. It's, it, it has a main role in the nasal cavity, and forms the nasal septum, main part of the nasal septum. The ethmoid is uh, forming the chrysogaly. This projection is the chrysogaly for attachment of the fox cerebri. Chrysogaly, and we have the uh, cribriform plate where the olfactory nerves pass through. Uh, we have the cranial fossa, fossae, the three cranial fossae. This is the anterior cranial fossa. This is the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa. The anterior fossa is from, uh, from, the, uh, from the anterior uh, boundary is formed by the frontal bone or the, also the floor is mainly formed by the frontal bone and this is a small part of the ethmoid bone and the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Anterior cranial fossa and the middle cranial fossa is one from uh, the lesser wing of the sphenoid till the petrous part of the temporal bone. This is the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa is from the posterior, uh, the petrous part of the squamous of the of the temporal bone until the uh, squamous part of the occipital bone. In the anterior cranial fossa, we have the foramen cecum for the imaginary vein. We have the crystal for the attachment of the fax cerebri and the cribriform plates for the olfactory nerves. And on the lesser wing of the sphenoid, we have the, and the two anterior clinoid processes, clinoid processes, and uh, these two are the posterior clinoid processes. Anterior and posterior clinoid processes, they are for at at attachment of the tentorium cerebelli. Tentorium cerebelli, all four. And we said this is the body of the sphenoid, uh, the two anterior clinoid processes and the posterior clinoid processes. We have the uh, optical canal, optical canal from the anterior side. 
This is the optical canal. For the, for the uh, passage of the optic nerve, which they reunion uh, at this groove, optic groove, or the uh, optic chiasm, or circle chiasmaticus. This is referred to as the sulcus chiasmaticus. We have the tuberculum cilli. This is the tuberculum cilli. And this fossa is called the pituitary fossa, or hypophysial fossa, or the cella tersica. And we have the dorsum cilli. This so the foramen uh, the in, the, uh, in the middle cranial fossa, uh, firstly we had the optic, uh, optic canal, the optic canal for the optic nerve. We have the superior orbital fissure, superior orbital fissure, superior orbital fissure. We have the foramen rotundum. This is the foramen rotundum. We have foramen ovale, and then foramen spinosa. This is foramen spinosa. These two are the foramen lacerum. Foramen lacerum. Just behind it is the carotid canal. This is the carotid canal. In the posterior cranial fossa, we have the internal acoustic meatus. Internal acoustic meatus on the pitchers part of the temporal bone. We have the jugular vein. This is the jugular uh, foramen. Jugular foramen. These are the condylar foramen. Condylar foramen. And we, we have the foramen magnum. Foramen magnum. And we have hypo, hypoglossal canals on the condylar foramen. Condylar parts of the occipital bone. These are the hypoglossal canals. Okay. On the posterior uh, cranial fossa, we have uh, some impressions. Uh, first, we have the impression for the sigmoid sinus. Impression for the sigmoid sinus. And this is impression for the inferior petrosal sinus. Inferior petrosal sinus. Here, we have the impression for the superior petrosal sinus. Superior petrosal sinus. And we have impression for the transverse sinus. On the sides of the internal occipital protuberance. We have transverse sinus, or impression for transverse sinus. On the base of the skull, we have already seen these were the condylar foramen, the hypoglossal foramen. We have, these are the jugular foramens, foramen, jugular foramen. We have stylomastoid. This is the mastoid, this is styloid, so this is stylomastoid foramen. So, let's remove the mandible. We have, again, we have, this is the, uh, into, uh, the carotid canal. This is the foramen lacera, foramen ovale, and the spinosa. We can't see rotundum because it leads into the pterygopalatine uh, fossa. And that rotundum leads to pterygopalatine fossa, so we, we can't see it under the base of the skull. We have the facial bones. Uh, this is again the frontal bone. It's regarded as both the cranium and the facial bones. We have, and we have the two small nasal bones from the uh, the bridge of the nose. The two small na nasal bones. We have the lacrimal bones. Lacrimal bone. We have zygomatic bone. And the two maxillae. Maxilla. We have mandible. This is the mandible. It's one bone. We have a vomer, which is uh, not clearly seen. It forms the septum, nasal septum. And we have the inferior concha. This is the inferior concha. On the uh, face, we have the orbital cavity, which is the, the formed by the maxilla. The floor is formed by the maxilla. This is formed by the maxilla. And uh, a part of it is formed by the zygomatic bone part of the floor and a part of the lateral side of the, of the cavity is formed by the zygomatic bone. The main part of the, of the roof is formed by the, uh, by the frontal bone. And this small part is formed by the ethmoid bone. This is the ethmoid bone. Some parts of the zygomatic bone are the frontal process. This is the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. But this is the zygomatic process of the frontal bone. 
frontal process of the zygomatic bone, and we have the zygomatic arch, zygomatic arch. Uh, for the maxilla, we have the uh, alveolar processes, which form roots for the upper jaw, the, the alveolar process, the alveolar process, and uh, the maxilla forms the floor of the nasal cavity, floor of the uh, orbital cavity, and the roof of the oral cavity. The hard palate is mainly formed by the maxilla. Maxilla, this is maxilla. And another bone of the, of the, of the face is called palatine. This is the palatine bone. Palatine bone forms the hard palate, a part of the hard palate, and the sides of the nasal cavity. These are nasal uh, palatine bones. The foramina in the face, first uh, in the orbital cavity, we see again the uh, optical canal. That's the optical canal. And we have the superior orbital fissure and the uh, inferior orbital fissure. Inferior orbital fissure. We have the nasal cavity divided into two by the nasal septum. This is the nasal septum. It's mainly formed by the ethmoid, and in the inferior side, it's formed by vomer. We have the, this is the middle conchi. Above it, we have the superior conchi, and this is the inferior conchi. We have the, on the orbital cavity, this is the supraorbital foramen, supraorbital foramen, and we have the infraorbital foramen. We have nasolacrimal foramen for the nasolacrimal duct. Nasolacrimal canal. Uh, and we have the zyg zygomatico facial foramen. This is the zygomatico facial foramen. The mandible is formed by the body and the ramus, the two rami of the mandible. We have the condylar process, or the head of the mandible, which forms the temporomandibular joint, and we have the coronoid process of the mandible. This is the angle of the mandible, and uh, this is the symphysis menti. Symphysis menti. Mm -hmm. These two foramen are called the uh, foramen, uh, mental foramen. Mental foramen. Take mandible out of the picture. We have on the roof of the oral cavity, we have the incisive, for, uh, incisive fossa, which lead to incisive foramen. And we have the two palatine fossa, the greater palatine fossa and the lesser palatine fossa. This is the posterior aspect of the nasal cavity. And we forgot these two. These are the pterygoid plates, which are again part of the sphenoid bone. Very good place. These are the medial plate and the lateral plates of the sphenoid bone. And this small projection is called the hamulus or pterygoid hamulus. This projection is very important. This is the pharyngeal tubercle for the attachment of the pharyngeal basilar fascia. The teacher say it's very important. And we have the temporal fossa. This is the temporal fossa. And with the, we have the inferior temporal fossa. Inferior temporal fossa.